right, hello and welcome to the beautiful world of trigonometry, which is an elegant way of relating the angle of a triangle with each side. And for this, let me illustrate this with a specific example. So suppose you have a right triangle and it's important that it's right. And with sides, let's say three, four, and five. Okay. And suppose this is an angle theta. Then there are many different ways of relating the sides with theta. The most important one, in my opinion, is cosine. So cosine of theta, what it is, it is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Adjacent means so the side that's not the hypotenuse, but that's next to it. So here, 3. And the hypotenuse is 5. So here, cosine would be 3 fifths. And then there is sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, which is opposite over hypotenuse, which in this case would be 4 fifths, so 4 over 5. And then there's tangent, which there are two ways of thinking about this. Either thing, it's sine over cosine. Or in this case, it is also opposite over adjacent. And in any case, in this case, it should give you 4 thirds. Okay, so again, opposite over adjacent. And there's this beautiful mnemonic for remembering all those. It's just, it's called abracadabra sokatoa. So, so. Ka toa, namely, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay. And uh, the other weird ones, and again, let me just uh, go over them. I like cosine and sine and tangent. The other ones I really don't like. So. I understand if you don't either. So there is secant of theta, which is just 1 over cosine of theta. And the way to remember it, s always goes with c. So it's 1 over cosine, which in this case, we found cosine to be 3 fifths. So it's 1 over 3 fifths, which is 5 thirds. And then, similarly, there is cosecant of theta, which is 1 over sine of theta. So again, remember, C goes with S. And in this case, that gives you 5 fourths. So 1 over 4 fifths. And that's 5 fourths. And lastly, there is cotangent which is just 1 over tangent. And that, remember, tangent was 4 thirds, so it's 1 over 4 thirds, which is 3 quarters. Okay? And, and as I said, so just remember cosine and sine. Tangent is just sine over cosine, and you get the other ones just from those uh, formulas. And just be a little bit careful. And it's, I feel the number one mistake uh, pre-calculus students do, 1 over cosine of theta, that's not the same as cosine to the minus 1 of theta. This will be called arc cosine, which you'll see in a couple of lessons. And do not confuse the two. It's very, very important. Now, because tangent is written in terms of sine and cosine and all those cotangent business and everything, all we really need to know is to find cosine and sine of certain angles. And there are a couple ones that are very important to know, but luckily there's sort of, kind of, sort of easy way to memorize them. And that's called the unit circle. So if you have a circle of radius one, 
It turns out the nice thing is, and if you have an angle theta here, the nice thing is that the x coordinate gives you precisely cosine of theta, and the y coordinate gives you sine of theta. And that hopefully allows you to memorize all those angles. And in particular, let me tell you some very important values. So again, remember the circle has to be radius 1. Well, here, what do you start with? You start with the point 1 comma 0. And what that tells you is, again, this is an angle of 0. It tells you that cosine of 0 equals 1 and sine of 0 equals 0. equals zero. So, and again, I want to emphasize, given an angle, the x-coordinate tells you cosine, the y-coordinate tells you sine. Now, let's move on a little bit more. So, the next important angle is pi over 6. Okay. Now, and again, I promise you, you always have the choice between square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. Which is which? Well, notice, the x-coordinate is very close to 1. And therefore, it has to be square root of 3 over 2 because it's really close to 1. 1 half is not close to 1. So it has to be the point square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half, which tells you that cosine of pi over 6 equals square root of 3 over 2, and sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Let me write this here. Okay. So sine of pi over 6 equals 1 half. And I want to remind you, you can find tangent and all the other functions very easily by using the formulas. So for instance, how would you find tangent of pi over 6? Well, it's just sine over cosine which in this case is 1 half over square root of 3 over 2, and that I believe simplifies to 1 over square root of 3. How would you find, for instance, secant of pi over 6? Well, again, it's 1 over cosine of pi over 6, so it would give you 1 over that, so 2 over square root of 3. Okay. All right, moving on, so pi over 4, What's nice about pi over 4 is that the x and y coordinate are the same, and that should remind you to put 1 over square root of 2 and 1 over square root of 2. What about moving on just a little bit more? So how about pi over 3? Okay, so pi over 3. Notice what is happening now. The y-coordinate is very big, but the x-coordinate is small, which kind of means this should be switched. So uh, 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. And again, this is what helped me memorize this, because here you have a, uh, the sign is very close to 1, so it has to be square root of 3 over 2, whereas the cosine is pretty small, so it has to be 1 half. And then, while well, pi over 2, notice here the x-coordinate is 0 and the y-coordinate is 1. So cosine of pi over 2 is 0, sine of pi over 2 equals 1. And this is really all you need to know, because if you go a little bit more, then you can just figure out what happens with bisymmetry. So suppose now you get pi over 3 plus this little thing. So in other words, I believe this becomes 2 pi over 3 because you're dividing the circle up into, you know, 2 thirds. Well, the y coordinate is still pretty big, so it should still be square root of 3 over 2. But here the x coordinate, notice it gets reflected. So it has to be minus 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. Okay. 
Okay? Or again, how about a different angle? Again, just do it by reflection. What if you have this angle, which is 5 pi over 4? Well, notice, it's kind of like pi over 4. But what is happening here is that the x and the y coordinates, they're negative. So it has to be minus 1 over square root of 2 and minus 1 over square root of 2. So what I'm telling you is just memorize this quarter circle and then do everything else just by reflection. That's, you know, or by just measuring you know, how, what is big, what is small, what is positive, what is negative. All right, now moving on. So just again, just a quick exercise with this trig circle. Again, suppose let's say you have the point 1 over square root of 5 and uh, 2 over square root of 5. So this is on the unit circle because this squared plus this squared equals 1. And the question is, what is cosine of theta, sine of theta, and everything else? Remember, for the unit circle, the cosine of theta is just the x-coordinate, which is 1 over square root of 5. Sine is the y-coordinate, which is 2 over square root of 5. And then you can find everything else with the formulas. So tangent of theta would be you know, sine over cosine, which is 2 over square root of 5 over 1 over square root of 5. And I believe that just simplifies to 2. And then you can find secant, cosecant, similarly with formulas. And then there are a couple of important identities to know with um, cosine and sine. And those really you have to memorize them because uh, they will be very important for what's to come later. The first one to remember is the following. Cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta equals 1. And this simply follows because if you have the unit circle, and uh, you have an angle of theta, remember that the x-coordinate is just cosine and the y-coordinate is sine. And this hypotenuse is 1. So really this formula just comes from the Pythagorean theorem. This squared plus this squared is hypotenuse squared, which is 1. And similarly, I guess if you divide this by cosine squared, you also get another important identity, which is tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. And again, you can verify this by using tangent equals sine over cosine and then getting this identity. And what's awesome about this is that this kind of tells you if you know cosine, you kind of already know sine. And if you know uh, secant or cosine, you kind of also know tangent. And so let's do just a quick exercise with this uh, thing. So for instance, if the cosine is one-third and theta is in the fourth quadrant, so somewhere here, let's try to find sine of theta. And usually when you have cosine and you want to find sine, you have to use this identity, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta equals 1. But we know now that cosine is one-third. So this gives you one-third squared plus sine squared of theta equals one. So uh, sine squared of theta is one minus one-third squared. So one minus one-ninth. And that gives you sine squared theta is eight-ninths. Okay, which kind of tells you sine. So what this tells you is that sine of theta is plus or minus square root of that. Either square root of 8 ninths or minus square root of 8 ninths. 
Now the question is, is this plus or is this minus? Well, this is why it's important to look at the quadrant. Here we have the fourth quadrant. And remember, sine is the y-coordinate of your point. So here sine of theta has to be negative. Okay? And in particular, because sine of theta is negative, it cannot be a square root of 8 ninths. It has to be minus square root of 8 ninths. Okay? Which, if you want, you can simplify this. But not uh, for this problem. And remember, you can also find, you know, uh, uh, cosine, I mean, you already have cosine, you can find tangent with sine over cosine, you can find secant with 1 over cosine, etc, etc. So those four two formulas are very important. There's another one, I think, with cotangent, in my opinion, not too important, but still know it. Um, last but not least, so uh, remember for radians, they can be very big, but we can always write them in an angle between 0 and 2 pi. And I would just like to remind you of an exercise like that. So let's calculate cotangent of 25 pi over 4. Okay. Well, in order to do that, let's just divide 25 by 4. So that's 25 by 4, and I think that gives you a quotient of 6 and then minus 24, and a remainder by, of 1, which tells you this is just cotangent, and let's write this here, that's cotangent of 6 times 4 plus 1 over 4 pi, and that is cotangent of, I believe this just simplifies to 6 pi, or 6, 6 plus 1 fourth, pi, and that gives you cotangent of 6 pi plus pi over 4. But now remember, a 6 pi adding multiples of 2 pi still gives you the same angle. So in particular, cotangent of that is the same thing as cotangent of pi over 4. And let's try to figure that out. Therefore, the answer is cotangent of pi over 4, which I like to remind you is just 1 over tangent of pi over 4, which is uh, 1 over sine over cosine, which is just cosine over sine. So cosine of pi over 4 divided by sine of pi over 4. And again, if you have any doubts what that is, just use your trig circle. Trig circle pi over 4 is roughly here, which has the same cosine and sine value. So it has to be 1 over square root of 2 and 1 over square root of 2. Okay. And so we get 1 over square root of 2 divided by 1 over square root of 2, which cancels out, and in the end you get 1. All right, and that concludes the basics of our trig adventure. So in the next couple of lessons, we'll see more sophisticated uh, features. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.